This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It sure is great being here with you, helping you learn to play the guitar. This is lesson 22 in this mini course on finger picking. I sure love finger picking. It is so fun. In this lesson, we're going to work on a new pattern. Or we're going to actually work on the technique of alternating the thumb. So we've done a little bit of that, but we're going to continue to do that. And we're going to work the fingers, index, middle, and ring all together. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. It may look pretty simple up here on the board. We're going to do a thumb pluck. P represents thumb, which is going to hit play the bass note of the chord. And then index, middle, and ring are going to happen all together at the same time. And we're going to use standard positioning. So index is going to pluck the third string, middle is going to pluck the second string, and ring is going to pluck the top string. We're going to pluck them all together. So thumb, index, middle, and ring together. Thumb, index, middle, and ring together. We're not going to alternate the bass just yet as we get going on this, but we will do an alteration here in a minute. So you can just kind of get used to on that E minor plucking thumb and then those index, middle, and ring fingers. I've got three different chord progressions written up here on the board. We'll start with this one on top, which goes G, C, G, D7, G, C, D7, G. So if we plug that in with that one, it would be just like that. Let's do two measures per chord and do it together. So we're going to have red T and we're going to have G, G, C, G, and D7, and G, and C. a while with these lessons but do remember to keep your natural break you don't want to collapse that wrist so you can just sweep those fingers right through and this is a great pattern to really focus on that because we're just pulling them through all at the same time with that sort of one-handed grab or one-handed clap kind of motion now there's another technique that we can do when we pluck the three notes together like that and I haven't talked about it, and I want to talk about it briefly, even though it's not the main focus of this lesson. And that is that when we're plucking them all together like that, sometimes it sounds really good to just break it up really in rapid, rapid arpeggio. So when I do it in rapid motion, I'm going index, middle, ring, and I'm just one right after the other. Bam, bam, bam. See, sometimes that technique gets used versus plucking them all together. So you can work on that one right after the other. Rapid arpeggio. Now as I'm doing this, I can do it and let the chord ring. I can also reset, and when I reset it's going to cut off the strings and stop them from ringing. So I'm planting my fingers and thumb right back to where they go. Both are a technique that can be used. One, I'm leaving my hand off so I get this ringing motion, and the other, I cut them off. Let's insert this technique, and you can do it either way. Practice doing it both ways. You might find different times when you want to do it one way versus the other. But let's go ahead and plug that in on this first progression. So we're going to have G, C, G, and D7, G, C, D7, and G. So let's go ahead and plug that into this chord progression. Two measures per chord. You got one, two, red, D, and G.
Sort of another fun variation to do with this pattern is to do it twice per measure. So instead of having it on beats one, two, three, and four, make it one and two and, and then do it again, three and four and, so one and two and three and four and. This kind of pattern can be used from time to time with different songs. So if we did this one time per measure, if we went through this, we'd have one, two, ready, and one, and two, and three, and four. Just like that. Okay, let's look at moving this thumb then. So what I've got written up here is B below beat one, an A, B below beat 3. That's communicating to us that we're going to use the bass note when we're on beat 1, and we're going to use an alternate bass note when we're on beat 2. Or, sorry, beat 3. So the other time, the second time that we use the thumb pluck. Now, the way this works is the same as if you've done any flat picking or alternating bass notes. The bass note of the chord is the root note. It's the, the note that the chord is named for. So like C for a C chord, F for an F chord, G for a G chord, and so on. But we can also pluck in place of that one of the other notes of the chord. And sometimes we even use a note that isn't part of the chord per se. But usually we're using the fifth of the chords. So a C chord, for example, has the note C, E, G, one, three, five. That's the notes. That's where those notes would come from out of the C major scale, steps one, three, and five. And the third is a major third above the root, and the fifth is a perfect fifth above the root. If you want to know more about theory, check out my quick answer uh, lessons on the different chords. But you've got one, three, and five. And so we can alternate our bass, our bass line with the third or the fifth. It usually happens with the fifth, but not always. Sometimes we will alternate with the third of the chord. So when I'm playing here, we're going to use one of these alternate bass notes. Now for most chords, that's going to be on the string that's just higher than where the bass note is, or the string that's just lower than where the bass note is. The, when we go higher, we use whatever note we're playing the chord on. So like on a C, if I go from a C and I have my root bass note on that fifth string, then I can just go to the next string, regardless of what the chord is. And in this case, that's alternating with the third. And my thumb's just going from the root to the third, to the root, to the third. And I input the uh, plucking of the remainder of the chord at least the notes the index, middle, and ring are playing there, and I just alternate like that C. That can work for any chord that we're playing. So if I'm doing an F, I can go, now the F gets a little tricky if I'm doing the four string F. Four string chords get tricky because I can't really go higher because I don't have any room to go higher. I've got index, middle, and ring plucking, so we don't go higher on four string chords, but any of the five, five and six string chords, we can just go right on up to that next one. So whatever the chord is, B7, doesn't matter. As long as the root is on the fifth of the sixth string, we can simply go to the next note up. It'll be the third or the fifth of the chord. So for the chords where we have just the top four strings, we have to go lower. And for any chord, we can go lower on the chords that are on the top four strings or the top five strings. We can't go lower with the sixth string because we don't have anywhere to go. But for a D or a D7, for example, and when we go lower, we are just going to mirror. Whatever we're doing on the fourth string, it needs to match on the fifth string. Or whatever we're doing on the fifth string needs to match on the sixth string. So when it's a D chord and we're playing the open fourth string, then we're going to play the open strings so it's really easy we just go fourth string to fifth string just like that It'd be the same for d7 but let's look at like the four string f now we could play the sixth string um, f and that would change things but four string f 
my ring's on the third third fret of that fourth string. That means that my ring finger has to go to the third fret of the fifth string on the alteration. That's also the case like a C chord. It has to go down to that third fret to third fret to third fret to third fret. If we were playing B7, it has to go second fret to second fret. So when we go lower, whatever we're doing on the string with the bass note, we have to do that exactly on the string that's lower than it too. Okay, let's look at putting this in with some of these chord progressions. So we'll do G, C, and D7 first. So with G, we can just move from 6th string to 5th string. From C, we can move from the 5th string to the 4th string. Seven, we have to move from the fourth string to the fifth string. So let's go ahead and play this one two measures per chord. So we got one, two, ret, D, and G. We'd have one, two, ret, D, and G, C, G, D7, G, C, D7, G. Now with this one, we could speed it up just like we did with, as I was getting going, as a variation where we do one and two and do it again in the same measure for three and four and. So it'd be like one and two. Let's look at doing a couple of these other progressions because uh, it's nice to just work with some of these different chords. So we have A, D, and E7. So for A, let's practice going lower because a lot of times with what we do with the chords, it's nice that at least with the one chord and the four chord, now if you want to know more about that, you can check out quick answer videos, but on this first progression, we're in the key of G and the G chord is the one chord, the C chord is the four chord, and the D7 is the five chord. And I know that because G comes off step one in the G major scale, C comes off step four, and D7 comes off step five. A comes off step one in the key of A, D comes off step four, and E7 comes off step five. But the one and four chord, if we do something similar with those, it a lot of times sounds really nice in a song. So if I'm gonna go high to low, on A, then I could also go high to low on D. And when I say high to low, I mean higher bass note, lower alternate bass note. So we can go open fifth string, so we have to do the open sixth string. Open fifth string, open sixth string. Then we get to the D, open fourth string, open fifth string. And that's the only option we have for D, so I've inserted that then as well. Otherwise with A we could go to the next string and it also works really well. But we're going to practice going high to low on A and D and then E7 we only have the one option to go 6th string to 5th string so lower bass to the higher alternate bass. Let's try this one two times for measure. So you got one, two, red, D, and or two times for measure two measures per chord, two times per chord. So one, two, red, D, and we have A, D, A, E7, A, D, E7. Okay, we could do it one one time per chord. One, two, red, D, and A.
could do it fast like we did before. Two, uh, we'll do one, one uh, time for chord, but one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, ready and one. Now, if we take a look at this last progression here, C, F, C, G7, C, F, G7, C, we're in the key of C. I put this one up here because we get to practice moving the ring finger. So we can go high to low, higher bass to lower alternate bass, but anything we do on the higher bass, when we go down to the lower string, we have to do the exact same thing. So third fret to third fret, third fret to third fret for C to, for the C chord, Fifth string to sixth string, so C. And on the F, we have to do the same thing. We're going to do the fourth string F, but third fret to third fret, only we're fourth string to fifth string. G7. Let's look at G7. With this one, G7 and the G chord is this one example where it works really well to actually skip a string. So 6 to 4th, 6 to 4 will give us the root to the 5th instead of the root to the 3rd. So the root to the 3rd would be going to that 5th string. If we wanted to go to the root to the 5th, we skip over a string. So we'll practice it that way since we already did a G the other way. So I have C, F, and G7. Two measures per chord. One, two, ret, T, and C. One time per measure. One, two, ready, and C. F, C, G7, C, F, G7, and C. Now we could do it fast where we had done it before eighth notes, so doing the pattern twice per measure where we speed it up. One and two and three and four and one, two. Ready and one, two. Now you get it going like that, it actually sounds a lot like flat picking, and it could be fun to add in based on runs. So. doing bass note runs, check out the quick answer videos that help with inserting those bass note runs. Okay, so that wraps us up in this lesson. I hope you're having a super fun time. In the next lesson, we're going to be alternating the bass again, but we're going to be doing uh, in our right hand, we're going to keep, keep some movement with the arpeggios. So it's going to be great. I'll see you then. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.